Glitching ain't easy. Actually, it can be. Today we're gonna create a glitch effect template that will work with any image or video. Hi, I'm Nick Greenwalt, motion designer, online teacher, and all around chill guy. Have you ever been hacked? Or maybe you're the one doing the hacking? Either way, glitch effects like this are very popular in today's cyber world. So in this tutorial, we're gonna make this glitch effect that you can set up once and then drop over any footage. The great thing about this template is that we're gonna have some control over the variables once we set it up. Once you create it, you can make your glitch as subtle or chaotic as you'd like. Here's what we're gonna learn. How to add distortion using a displacement map, how to shift color channels, set up sliders to change these effects easily, building a reusable glitch template. Make sure to check out the link in the description and you can snag the project files that will help you get the most out of this lesson. Let's check it out. To get started, I'm gonna drop in my source image. This can be whatever you want, an image, video, text, whatever. I'm gonna use this School of Motion logo. And we can go ahead and pre-compose this stuff, call this composition source. So now that this image is pre-composed, we can change whatever is inside this composition in the future without messing up our effect, okay? So now we wanna create some distortion which is gonna drive this glitch effect. And we want this distortion or noise to be on a new layer so that we can reference it in the future easily with an adjustment layer. So let's make a new solid, call this noise, make it the size of our comp, color doesn't matter, okay. We're gonna add an effect called fractal noise. Cool. So let's set the type to block and bump up the contrast a little bit to give it some defined shapes. And I'm gonna open up the transform properties here and uncheck uniform scaling. This way I can stretch out the width like this so it gets real nice and wide. That's good. And let's scroll down to the evolution options and this is what we want right here, random seed. You can see if I scroll through this, it starts to dance like this. Now we want to kind of automate this right here. So I'm going to alt click on this random seed stopwatch and type in a little expression, time times, and then we can type in whatever number we want. Let's say 15. So now if I press play, you can see this is just running through this random seeds. The higher number you type in, the faster it's gonna cycle, lower number, slower the change. Great. Now let's go ahead and hide this noise layer. You can see nothing's happening. That's okay. Let's make something happen. We're going to right click, make a new adjustment layer, and add a displacement map. Now we want this displacement map to target our noise layer. And we also want to click here where it says source, and we wanna use the effects and masks on our noise layer too. And we also wanna set this to luminance so that it targets the black and white values. If we press play here, you can see what's starting to happen. Now we can mess with the horizontal and vertical displacement to really kind of make this effect look a lot crazier. But I don't really like how kind of sharp this effect is starting to look. So I think that I wanna go back on my noise layer and make it look a little blockier. So I'm gonna add an effect on this layer called mosaic. So we can tweak the amount of blocks in here and it's a little bit hard to see the results of what's actually happening. So let's go ahead and turn off our noise layer, turn back on our adjustment layer, and then with this adjustment layer on, we can tweak the amount of blocks in here until we get something that we like. 
and we can just play around with this and we can always come back to it later. And I'm also going to go ahead and just rename this layer displacement map just to keep things nice and tidy. Now, another aspect of glitches is the separation of red, green and blue values, also known as chromatic aberration. Now, since all the colors on a screen are made up of R, G and B, when you are getting hacked or doing some hacking, your R, G and B go crazy. Come on, this is Hollywood hacking 101. So let's make a new adjustment layer by right clicking new adjustment layer. And we're going to add an effect called shift channels. So what we want to do here is we want to turn off all of the colors except for red. So let's click where it says green, click full off, blue, full off. There we go. And we'll come down here to the blending mode and set this to lighten. Great. Now it looks like nothing's happening, but we're going to get there again. And why don't we rename this layer to be shift red and we can even set this little uh, layer color tag to red also it will help us visually identify it in the future let's help out future us now what we want to do also is duplicate this layer two more times and do it for the other colors so i'm going to click Control or command d to duplicate it once more we'll call this to be shift green change the little color tag to be green and turn off red and turn on green. Do it once more for blue. Change the color tag to blue, name it blue, turn off green, turn on blue. So really looks like nothing's happening here. So let's make something happen. What I want to do is I also want to add a transform effect. So now with this transform effect on here, if I move the position on this layer, you can see that I'm shifting the blue here. But I want this to feel a little more random, like we said in the beginning. So if I alt click on the position of this transform effect and type in a little wiggle expression, start typing in wiggle with open parentheses, and it will also autofill here. And then we can type in two numbers so let's say three comma ten this will mean wiggle three times per second ten pixels like this if we press play this is what's happening and if we copy this transform effect we can paste it on our other two layers and they will also now have the wiggle cool But you know, looking at this, I don't think I'm happy with the way that these things are all wiggling around. And I think I want a little more control over all of these properties. So let's make a controller. I'm gonna right click, create a new null object. And I'm gonna name this controller. Did you guess it? And let's add some slider controls to this layer. Search for slider control and let's add one. And we're going to duplicate this clicking here and click Control D or Command D on Mac. Now we have two slider controls. We're going to name the first one to be frequency. By clicking enter rename and the second one to be amplitude. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the expressions that we put down on these layers. I'm going to highlight these layers. Double click E on the keyboard to reveal the expressions. Let me give myself a little more room here. And if I click onto my controller layer, I can lock this panel up here by clicking the lock button. Okay. And so if I grab one of the numbers, the first number on my wiggle expression here, this three, I'm going to pick whip and attach it to the frequency slider like this. And I will do the same with the 10, the second number, pick whip it to my second slider, the amplitude slider, like this. And if you do this and you get this little error here, 
all that you need to do is add a closing parenthesis to your line like this. Just close the expression out and you should fix your error. So now what we can do is we can actually control this transform expression using these sliders. Isn't that neat? So I'm gonna copy this expression now. If I right click on the position here, copy expression only, and I will paste it onto my other two shift layers like this. Just control or command V to paste it. And I'll also, why don't I open up my displacement map here and do the same onto my horizontal displacement. First, I'm gonna zero it out so that the zero matches the zero on my sliders and then paste it onto here. Cool. So now we can just animate these sliders, any kind of animation we want on here and it'll affect all of these layers. So why don't I just go ahead and do this now? Create a glitch animation on the sliders and make some kind of cool glitch animation to happen. And I don't wanna bore you as I put down some keyframes, so I'm actually going to hack the space-time continuum and travel forward very quickly. And this is a skill that you can learn once you get really good at hacking like me. Okay, so I made a little glitch animation, but one thing I'm not happy with is how linked certain things are. For example, the horizontal displacement, it's not being as exaggerated as I want compared to how much these layers are shifting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another slider onto this controller layer that's gonna work as a multiplier. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I add another slider control onto here, and let me just call this multiplier. Now what I'll do is on this expression, on our displacement map, I'm gonna add at the end of this line, a times sign, multiply, and then pick whip to this multiplier. So now what this will do is any number I put into this multiplier will multiply this entire previous expression times the multiplier. So let me go where there's a little bit of keyframe action happening. And now if I start to crank this number up a little bit, you can see now it is multiplying by this number. Cool. And I can do the same thing with the other expressions here, but I can just do different multipliers. For example, if I want this to be a little bit different but and less, I could do plus this multiplier, or I could do minus this multiplier like this. And this can just really help you now add a little bit of variety to your different layer properties. So now let me just go in and just tweak my animation a little bit, add some of this multiplier, throw some keyframes down on it, and let's see what kind of animation we can come up with. And once again, I'm going to hack space time and do this very quickly. And do not try this at home, I am a professional. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good. I think the multiplier helped a lot, and I'm pretty happy with this. So now that we have a glitch effect that we are happy with, let's clean all of this up a little bit and make it an easy template that we can reuse in the future. So personally, I don't like all of these layers stacked here. I'm clicking U to hide and show all of my keyframes, by the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of these layers and I'm gonna pre-compose them, I'm grabbing everything except for my source comp. And I'm just gonna right click pre-compose, let's call this glitch effect. It's important to get really clever with your names. So now if I play through this, oh no, the effect is gone. What have we done? Well, no worries. If we click the continuously rasterize button, all of our adjustment layers and everything are going to still affect anything that's below them. So no worries here. But now the issue is that if we wanna keep working on this glitch, we have to click into this comp and, and edit these sliders in here. And that's gonna be kind of a pain because we can't see what we're working on and we have to keep clicking back and forth. So what can we do? Let's figure it out. So if we click back into our comp, 
what we can do is we can actually copy these sliders, Contr control C, copy them, go back into our main comp, and let's just paste them onto our source composition. You can click U to reveal everything and make sure, just confirm that it actually pasted onto here and great. And so now with this composition selected, I'm going to lock these effect controls up here. Click back into my glitch effect and I'm just gonna delete all of these keyframes here. And with this controller layer selected, let me just pick whip these sliders onto the sliders on the source comp like this. So now what should happen is everything in this glitch effect comp should be relinked to the sliders on this main composition like this. So now anything we want to work on in here, we can just do it all on this outer source composition and any changes we want to make, we can just do them out here and it will update inside the main composition. So now to update the contents of this glitch, all you got to do is go into your source here and you can just drag right in a new source image, contents, whatever, and your glitch will just apply right on top. So from here, you can either just work directly into this template that we made and make new glitches, or you could save this project file and import it into another and use it as a glitch template. And that's really all there is, folks. And there we go. Look at this awesome glitch effect we made. We created some nice distortion, shifted color channels, and even attached all these properties to sliders so we could easily control them in the future. And if you want to take your motion skills even further, why not advance your knowledge of automation with Expression Session, where Zach and Noel will teach you how to approach, write, and implement expressions in After Effects. If you want to learn more ways to improve, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.